Americans especially were great souvenir people. And if we go up to Paris and we go up in the Eiffel Tower, why we want to have a little Eiffel Tower to bring home. And uh, if we go off to Africa or off to Vermont or whatever and uh, shoot uh, a handsome animal, uh, we want to have a way to re remember it. We want to have a way uh, to show it to people. In fact, in this little room here where, where we're sitting, we keep all these, uh, if you will, these artifacts of the hunt because it reminds us, it brings those experiences back. have me on at the beginning of the week, so it's, what is it, Thursday now? Yeah. So it'll be, uh, it'll be on form today, probably, uh, you may be, may be ready for Saturday pickup. Yeah, yeah. yeah. One paper can, what do you so many? Just a little bit later, because the times were so many. Fun skin and mammals if you can't listen to country music at the same time. <laughs> you know, <laughs> just kind of fits the mood. I'm gonna roll this in clean cornmeal, Mark, and when you get your skin off, do the same thing. And then I'll put this in Peter's field catalog when I get them printed out. Pad, I use two-part epoxy, it's called Sculptol or Oil Game, and it sets within about two hours. So you mix a little bit up, and you smear a light coat on the nose, the lower half, and let it set to where it's firm. You remodeled this nose, so yes. how'd you get all the hairs back in there? Well, with the hairs, I save other deer that I'm not mounting, that I don't use. I have them in the freezer, I take them out, and I pull the nose hairs out, and I put each individual nose hair where they belong. Now you're going to see stuff that, I mean, it looks like a real animal. Anything that you see here, whether it's a deer, bear, fish, squirrel, whatever it might be, they all have something in them similar to this. This is a deer mannequin. What? This is what we start out with. Hey, does anyone have any questions? Okay, we're going to go. We're going to follow Mr. Walter now. Grooming is excellent. Not good, but excellent. You have that? All right, are we ready for C? It's okay on secure attachment to base. Okay to good, I don't want to get too tough. Cleanliness is excellent. Over to G on body accuracy. Very clean, nice, 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 nice. I like all of it. Tail location, I like it. I like it very much. It's the best turkey here by far, by far. It's really a good bird. It would do well on the national show. I thought something about the wings look like predator wings rather than goose wings. Are you with me? So I, I don't know. So if I don't know, then i got to give the benefit of the doubt. And then I look at the obvious things. Like I said, let's give it a shotgun approach. Does he have eyelids? Do they look right? Is it soft? And go with that. Okay. Okay. Anyway, thanks for having me. I had a good time. All right. Have me back. But make sure it doesn't rain this time. <laughs> it doesn't rain. You know? Is, is to uplift the, the ministry of tax for me, the whole fraternity, where they really grow and make 
tax them look much more artistic because I think the general public really needs to be heavily educated. And uh, I really enjoy the tax room because I like the rawness of it. I mean, I've, I've done a lot of things with, uh, you know, with sculpture and art and different things. I never felt close to uh, the earth as much as I did handling creation. I just, I can't explain it to you. But to handle a skin versus handling clay, it's a different feeling. And it's almost like being close to home. I don't look at a skin like as a dead object. I look at it as a restoration, like a privilege to be able to work with. And it's a real discipline thing for me that I have to really study. And all I'm trying to do is complement what God so easily made on this planet. That opened up right there where we can see the body. And I can just about at the limbs. I'm going to continue down to do the same thing through the back section. Well, the way I got into taxidermy was, um, well, actually, when I was a kid, I kind of did it as a hobby, doing small game stuff, squirrels and birds and things like that, you know, whatever you could find when you were a kid. But, uh, well, in time I started, you know, enjoying doing it a little bit more, so. And I did construction for 17 years, too, and, and I was done breaking my back. That should be put in with skin and not hanging up those high. Mm -hmm. And you write all the tags. Because they got all these antique names on them. I thought I had all of these, got all the information on these guys, but I didn't actually. I'm going to have to go look this one up again. I don't know if it's a uh, skin and skull or just a skin. For the adults or the children? Yeah, these adults. Oh. She had a muskrat foot and shrew parts in her stomach. <laughs> She's got a lovely tag. I did that tag. Yeah, you did. <laughs> She's very cute. Hold up, Frank. Right? You in the way? Yeah, I can't. What am I supposed to do? Let my fingers drop on me? Wait a minute. Okay. You got him up this way. Let's get... put the back in, Frank. You can grab right hold of the bear just like this. Okay. Okay. Should be close. Should be close, let's see. He's in there. Yeah. Yep, yeah, there it is. Okay, now. Well, this resin over here, is this clear cast hand. polyester or epoxy? Who uh, cares? Well, it's all about it. I'm gonna, uh, we're going to have it covered in no, in no time. It's not that big a deal. I brushed all that other white on there in no time. How's it going? Yeah, it's fine. Is it looking better? Getting, yeah. Yes, yes, getting more of the... Okay, just that blue that you see in it, We'll be right out. Just like snow. We're right in Arctic land. Yeah, baby. It's a great vertical piece if you got a well, tall vertical what this corner sale to stick is it in. Sensationalism. You know, here's this big monster. Yeah, this is going to go to outdoor shows and people are going to walk by gawking at it. Oh, they're not even going to look at that base. They're just going to walk around going, oh, oh. Because I wasn't getting a lot of big things for the museum, I used to go out at night on the dirt roads and I'd cruise around on the roads at night and look for bigger road kills and I got like a coyote, a peccary, you know, a female peccary, which is one of these wild pigs and she actually had twins in her uterus so she and her mate apparently had gotten hit by a Mack truck or something. Testes were descended down in the scrotum so he's probably ready for action this spring. Um, Descended testes into the scrotum would it indicate that he's reproductively active. You can see how thin it is. This is the animal's left arm coming through. Well, this guy 
really got battered. That's all I have to say. Got to make sure you get all the organs out so that they don't rot in there so that when it goes into the bug colony, it's, there's nothing rotting in there. Heart and lungs. son Mike who's sitting here with me gave me this book called The African Hunter. Now we'd always been interested in hunting and done some New England deer hunting and a little bit of bird hunting. But uh, as we both read this book, why it just fascinated us so much that we became very, very much interested in, in the really, really uh, high powered African stuff. And one thing led to another and uh, many years later when we were able to make it financially possible, why the two of us bit the bullet and got in touch with a very eminent uh, African hunter and went uh, went over there and had a wonderful time. And with these animals from Africa, the way they cleaned them in Africa is actually amazing. They would skin them, but they didn't bother pulling any of the meat or flesh or, or brains or anything out of these animals. They had a little shed and they would put the all the skulls in the shed on the ground and within two or three days they come out clean. Just, just like, like that, yeah. and it's from the bugs in the ground coming up yeah. and cleaning the skull. Right. That clean, right. like you boiled it. Okay, put this under the light to dry. Before it goes in the bug room, I'm the bug tank. This is a dolphin bath on my way. You're wondering what it is. Most important thing to do is take care of the bugs. They make your life a lot easier by eating all the meat off these skeletons. If you didn't have bugs, you'd have to boil all these skeletons and chew all this meat off.
Because I'm sitting the eye right now. I want to make sure I get the right expression around it. You know what I mean? The dead eye, you mean? Yeah, I don't want to. What are you looking for? Well, yeah. Isn't he going to be kind of? Is it, what, are we closing it off completely, or are no, we going to have a little? You want a partial? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the ball's right with the world. I can bring this right out his nose. Come on, baby. Yeah, this is all points taxidermy. We just wanted to uh, let you know that your your pet mount is complete, and uh, you can come in and pick it up anytime that you're ready. Uh, we're here from eight to six every day, Monday through Friday. So give us a call. Thank you. That's what I'm thinking. Left to right, right to left, up, high, down, come down in. Now, what if we uh, what if we brought one a little higher and, and brought it down in here like that? Cover it up. Yeah. Good, good, good. I like going. Yep. See, I mean, that's not even even. If you're to draw a straight line from here to there, you know, it doesn't have to be. There's nothing even on our faces either. I have about art and what God gives me um, in me I try and take all that nucleus and put it into a piece and really hit a person hard and if I only hit a few and then I go on to the next piece <laughs>